All right, well, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for attending. This is our webinar on uh, low vision smartphone settings that you can use um, on, on your device. So we have a lot of great stuff for you and we are recording this um, so that um, there are several people who registered and aren't able to be here, but we'll send the, the recording out afterward. Um, for those of you who haven't been part of uh, Way Around webinar, um, we do, we love participation. Feel free to, you know, raise your hand if you have questions. We try to be really good about pausing and asking for questions. And if you're just totally lost and something we're saying is not making sense, please um, just unmute yourself, let us know. Um, but, and also if you have tips to add, please add those things in. So we, um, we love having everybody here and we love hearing from you as well. Um, I'm Jessica Hip. I'm the COO of Way Around. You've probably seen my name on emails, um, other types of communications that you get from us. And I also have my colleague, Michael Doyce. And Michael, I will let you introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Michael. I work with Jessica here at Way Around. I work with our, I work to develop the mobile app and to talk with all of you guys about the amazingness of Way Around. I'm also legally blind and use the product. Uh, here at my apartment as well. All right. Um, well, I am going to also just go ahead and share my phone screen. And um, this is going to be focusing on um, mostly iOS. Um, and that's because a lot of our users do use an iPhone. Um, a lot of the features that we're talking about today are also available on Android. So we will probably um, do some follow-up conversations just about how you can access those on Android. Um, you can try to stump me and see, see if we know um, the questions about Android, but it is actually a lot easier to share my iPhone screen um, because of my setup than my Android. So that is what we're gonna be doing today. So let me go ahead and share that. And Michael, I will let you um, introduce um, the, I think the first thing we're gonna be talking about is something a lot of people may be familiar with, mm -hmm. and that is um, bold text and adjusting the text size. Yes, and uh, as a uh, forward to that, uh, just know folks, we are not using voiceover for this demonstration as these are specific to low vision features. So they are features that you can use on your phone for if somebody has low vision but may not need voiceover or talk back. Mm -hmm. um, and so Michael, you can yeah. use a lot of these if you are yes. using a screen reader. Um, some of them um, you know, may get a little bit funky, especially some of the spoken types of things, but mm -hmm. um, a lot of them you can also use with a screen reader. Correct. So the first thing that we wanted to bring up is bold text, like we mentioned. And this is very useful if you just need a little bit extra on your phone. And we're kind of starting off with the um, least impact here and, and working our way up. And, uh, you know, I don't use this personally, but I know a lot of people that do. Uh, my mother is in her... Um, in her seventies and she just needs a little bit extra to be able to read her phone. So, especially on the keyboard, some people really have difficulties in reading the keyboard. So she uses bold text to help her do that. Um, and so to enable that, what we could do is go to uh, our settings app. Then we go to the, um, accessibility mm -hmm. and then we go to um, display and text size and there's an option there for bold text great and i just turned it on mm -hmm. so you'll notice that text does not get bigger but a little darker and easier to read this is really I think use, I, I kind of wish there was just a bold text option for the keyboard. That would be fantastic. Um, but that keyboard can be very difficult to read. So bold text can help with that. But it does change everything throughout much of the operating system uh, of iOS and many of your apps, not all of your apps will change, but many of those will have bold text now. Jessica, is this something that you use? It, you know, it is, and I have um, fairly good eyesight, but I find that, you know, as 
you know, I age and my eyes just get a little bit older or especially at night, I really like having the bolder text. Um, I think it, it just makes it easier on the eyes. Um, so I, I think it's a really great feature. Mm -hmm. And yep. Michael, do you want to go down to the next one and talk about yes. the larger text? Because it's right in the same place. So uh, we can go to uh, settings, accessibility, and to display and text size. And yep, I'm already there. Yep, and so you can change the uh, the text size there. And this is, there's two places where you could see this screen and that's under display and brighten, uh, I believe display under the main part of settings, but this screen actually has an option for larger text sizes. And this is where you can make the text on your screen extremely big. Right. Um, so if for those of you looking at my screen, I'm actually, the, the text that I currently have, which doesn't seem all that big to me, it's almost at the, the biggest setting. I can, you know, adjust it to be quite small. Um, and this is the largest sort of, um, you know, native. But if I toggle this switch on to larger accessibility sizes, suddenly now I'm just kind of in the middle of the range. Right. So I can go ahead and keep making it even bigger. And you can see it'll, it will get quite large. Right. Um, so the word accessibility, for instance, can't fit on one line. Um, with this size. So I'm going to put it back a little bit, but I will go ahead just for the rest of the presentation, just leave it a little bit larger. Yep. And, you know, it's, that's really nice. If you don't want to use the zoom feature that we're going to talk about later, you just want your text to be bigger. Um, one thing to note though, with that, um, there might be places where apps do not implement this well. And, and so it may cut off text or have them have it, uh, you know, two letters per line or certain things like that. So just be careful, you know, how you set this setting. I have, uh, I do use this. Well, I use the larger text size. I don't use the larger accessibility sizes, but I have it set to the largest for the um, text size. And even in the Instacart app, whenever I'm placing a grocery order, it says, S dot 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 D. And that throws me off every time whenever I'm trying to chat with the person delivering my groceries because it's obviously supposed to be sinned, but it 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 won't fit. So S dot 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 D. So just oh, a little it's tip. It's funny that um that an ellipsis takes up less room than an E and an N. Right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. And it, well, and, Michael, and I don't we have know. a couple um we have a couple of other just sort of um ways to optimize the visual settings mm -hmm. on your phone. And those have to do with um, you know, if you have photosensitivity especially, um, they could be helpful. Do you want to talk about those, Michael? Sure. So the, the next one that we have is dark mode. And you know, it's interesting. I go between light mode, the regular and dark mode. Depending on the day, uh, I'm I'm kind of just, uh, but I know a lot of a lot of people really like dark mode because it sets your phone in a way that is re is not re reversed but designed to look good in a, a environment where apps are written to have a non white background. So instead of being white, they may have like a dark gray or uh, a black background and lighter text. So let's talk about how to enable that and we can see what it looks like. And we'll, we'll even open a few apps and, and show you that. So if you go to the settings app uh, and go to display and brightness, you can yeah, enable settings. Yep. Yep. And so it's that very first one. It says appearance. It currently is set to light. And mm -hmm. if I select dark, then all of a sudden my screen is, um, it's black with white font instead of right. white with black font. And, and Michael, kind of a... I actually, I typically have my device set in dark mode. I really mm -hmm. like it. Mm -hmm. um, I have the terrible habit of, um, instead of going to sleep, doing a lot of scrolling. And I find that um, I start to get a headache. 
but if I switch it to dark mode, I can just keep scrolling. So I, you know, it's probably, maybe I should leave it in light <laughs> mode and just um, be a little more disciplined. Mm -hmm. But I, I really like dark mode. I think it's, um, it's easier on the eyes probably for most people. Right. So do we want to look at the way around app with dark mode? Yeah, let's do that. So I will close out of settings and open up way around. And here we are. So you can see there's the, the larger font, um, you know, that I have. It's a black background and pretty much everything, all of the text is white. And it's, um, there we go. So this is a feature we enabled dark mode. It was a couple of years ago, right, Michael? Yes. Yep. Yep. Several and, years ago. And I think that's one thing to note is not every app is compatible with all of these settings. So just like Michael was talking about the text size, um, dark mode is another that an app actually, you have to do some programming to make it work well with dark right. mode. Um, and in fact, just this past week, I saw that a, a pretty major app, I think it was NPR, they announced, we now have dark mode for Android. And it really surprised me that, you know, it, even in 2024, there are people who are still working on, you know, making the apps, um, you know, fully, fully compatible with some of these features. Right. So if you, um, so Michael, what do you do if you're in dark mode and you get into an app and like, what, what would it look like if it wasn't compatible? So if it was not compatible, it would just look like the standard app, the light mode, the, the standard mm -hmm. view. So you just would not see like Facebook was a big culprit for a long time of not having dark mode. I believe on iOS, they've added that now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one thing you can do is of course, get in touch with that company and advocate, hey, we'd love for you to, to offer this in dark mode. Um, but aside from playing the waiting game, is there anything else you could do, Michael? There is another way. And that way is called smart invert. And this has been around actually longer than dark mode has. Um, I'll, the original was called Classic Invert, and that is still available. I, I don't recommend it, um, as it just inverts everything, including your images, by the way. Uh, it looks very interesting. But wow. Smart Invert tries to invert just the solid colors and leave your images alone. And so you can you can enable that, in again, in um, settings, accessibility, display and text size. So you okay. And invert. Michael, hold on, hold on just a minute. Um, should I turn dark mode off? I would, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to light mode. And then you said accessibility? Yes, accessibility. And then back to that display and text size. Yep. And you, you do have to scroll down a little bit. So here's the smart invert and it's a, a toggle. Yep, it's a toggle switch. So I turned so, that on. So one thing I want to point out, I, I don't know if you noticed this, Jessica, but right off the bat, the backgrounds are a lot darker than if you just use dark mode. Right. So it basically just inverts the color. And you can even see like in certain apps. So do we want to go back to way around and kind of see one area where it might be a little different from dark mode? Oh, so right off the bat, I noticed that um, the settings button up in the top corner of way around is green, whereas in dark mode, it was red. So I think that's kind of the, you know, the direct opposite in terms of the images. Right. And the, the animated scanner uh, circles are green yes. as well. But yeah. if you notice that a lot of our images and things like that, um, if you if we were to scan, so if we go to explore way tag in settings, uh, or explore way around, uh, yeah. then we should see. So you can see the buttons are green. If we go to explore way around, our images should look correct. Okay, right. So at this, um, we have the the DVA National Convention. Some other examples. Mm -hmm. Most of the links are green. They're showing up green instead of the red. Right. Right. Um, and if you haven't seen this section of way around what I did, I just went into the settings and then went all the way down and it's called experience way around. And you'll be able to see some of the public sites that we've um, tagged. 
So that, it's a it's kind of a fun place to explore. Exactly. So, all right. So well, this works in nearly every app. It could make some apps look a little interesting, uh, especially if they have different colored navigation bars. It will change those colors. Um, I don't know as many people use this feature now. I think a lot of people use it for if they don't have dark mode in the app. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Michael, what I, um, would you suggest, you know, just use dark mode, you know, have that turned on, but then if there's an app or something that you use frequently, mm -hmm. um, and, and it's not compatible with dark mode. Um, then go in and kind of toggle on smart invert, um, right. or, you know, toggle it back off just mm -hmm. so kind of use it more situationally, but Correct. have dark mode on as your, your primary setting. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Some of these features, they do such similar things that it, you know, it's which one do you use and which one is going to work best. Um, right. So I think, you know, using that dark mode setting, I, I love it. I think it looks nicer. It looks cleaner it than does. smart invert, but I mean, smart invert is smart. Um, so it, it can be helpful. And, and the dark mode is designed on a per app basis, whereas smart invert just kind of works everywhere. So mm -hmm apps that use dark mode have been programmed to look good in those colors. Mm -hmm. And just going down, you know, I'm, I'm back in the settings now. Um, so we have smart invert toggled on and for people who, you know, brightness, if you have photo sensitivity or there's certain colors, you can filter out colors. Um, you know, you can, you can really do a lot of tweaking in this section to make your phone um, work well for you. I think the one thing that I would caution is we've even found with the way around apps, sometimes people get really, um, you know, get really specialized settings and some combination of things will make something very random stop working. And I think it's, it, it's just sort of the nature of technology. We do a lot of testing across a lot of different devices, a lot of different operating systems. Um, but, you know, we no one can test for every combination of every setting. So sometimes if you call us and say, oh, the way around isn't working, um, you know, we will ask about, well, what sort of accessibility settings do you have turned on? Because it more often than you would think, it, that can be kind of the culprit. So we can, that's good for us to know because sometimes we can fix it. So when you see us um, do a new release and we say minor bug fixes, often it's that type of thing. Um, but just just know that the more customized you get, the higher the chances are that something on your phone somewhere may not work quite right that you wouldn't necessarily know. Right, exactly. All right, so I'm gonna turn Smart Invert back off. Fantastic. And Michael, what do you think? Let's pause for questions and see if anyone has, you know, something to add questions about these settings. Yes. Do you use these? Yeah, Brian, go ahead. Audio now unmuted. Yeah. Um, I've noticed that if I can make my voiceover shut up, um, that if I have just smart invert on, the numbers on my lock screen for the clock are like dark, dark. They're like the same color as the background. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I always have my smart invert and my dark mode turned on at the same time. So the numbers show back up. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's very good to know. And, and you can change the color of the clock um, with the new lock screen. Um, where you could change your lock screen and those kind of things. So there's so many ways to customize the iPhone. Awesome. Any other comments or tips? That was really helpful. All right. Well, we do have um, 10 things that we want to share with you today. So we've gotten through four, bold text, adjusting the text size, dark mode and smart invert. So these are features that a lot of people know about. Um, the next two um, are, are different ways of zooming. So Michael, why don't we start with um, the just the zoom, the magnification? 
Right. So this is a feature that I use. This is my main feature that I use for accessibility on my phone. I'm not a, a uh, everyday voiceover user, so I use uh, Zoom a lot. And when I say Zoom, we're not referring to the meeting platform. Uh, Apple uh -huh. has called their magnification Zoom uh, ever since 2004, 2005 timeline. So uh, in fact, this is the feature that got me to buy a Mac and an iPhone in the first place. Uh, huh. Because uh, when this came out, uh, in Windows, we had Magnifier, but it was only a very small part of the screen. And we had Zoom text, which cost several hundred dollars. So, you know, you had to buy a PC and buy Zoom text to get this functionality. And I said, you know, I went to an Apple store. I said, yeah, I've never, I've used Macs a long time ago, but Im impress me. What, what can it do? And the employee knew that I was blind. And he said, well, come over here. Let me show you. And he showed me Zoom. And he showed me voiceover. And I said, okay, I'm buying one today. Uh, so Zoom has stayed pretty much the same uh, on Mac and iOS since it came out. Um, so it's very a very useful feature. The way it works, it can magnify the full screen or a part of the screen. I think we're going to show how to do the full screen today. But the way you enable that is to open the settings app and go to accessibility. Okay, I'm still there. Okay. So, and then at the very top in accessibility is Zoom. Yep, right it's the second option. So voiceover is first and then Zoom. Right. So it's right below voiceover. And all you have to do is just turn on Zoom and that enables the feature. Now you notice the entire screen zooms in. So your next question might be, okay, how do I move around? Yeah, the well, first time I did this, Michael, I got stuck and I, I don't think I even had the toggle on the screen anymore to try to get it off. Right. So you can completely zoom back out by taking three fingers and tap twice. And you can zoom back in with three fingers twice again. Okay. And now if somebody wants to move around the screen, you can do that by taking three fingers, put them on the screen and move your fingers around. It's kind of panning the screen. Yep, exactly. Exactly. I'm glad that Zoom does uh, show Zoom. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. some screen captures will not do that. So that's fantastic. Yeah, and Michael, I will say, I think, you know, a lot of people, especially if you're a screen reader user, you know, you're pretty good at double tapping. Um, if you've never controlled your phone via any sort of um, gestures, it's a pretty quick tap. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've I've watched enough people and worked with them that some people will do like a tap, tap, and it's too slow. The phone would recognize that as two single taps. So you want to go tap, tap. So it's pretty quick. It does take a little bit of practice. You know, you want all three fingers to kind of hit the screen at the same time. Um, so it's something, you know, practice it a little bit, but it is, you know, you'll get the hang of it fairly quickly. Right. And, and there's also a feature called the zoom controller. Now I use this whenever I'm reading a lot of, uh, books or I read Marvel comics. I'm a huge comic book reader. And so with that, if you enable the zoom controller, um, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to just, um, zoom out. Okay. Perfect. And then it's um, you have to scroll down a little bit. So I hit Zoom controller. It brings me to a new screen, and then I'm going to toggle on the Show controller. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of in the the center toward the left is where it showed up. Right, and you can move that wherever you want. I usually put mine at the bottom right because I'm right-handed. Okay, and then you can then tap and hold on that controller to zoom in. And then you can just move your finger around the screen and you can do everything with one finger and then you release the controller and it zooms out. So I could use that to scan and go through large documents, you know, Kindle books, all kinds of things with that method. Um, and then you can just turn off the controller uh, in here 
And it's it's fantastic. It's a nice way to be able to use the Zoom feature with one finger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really I really like having the Zoom controller if you're going to use this, if this is something that can help you. Um, I, I prefer the Zoom controller. I think it's just easier and more natural, especially if you're using it a lot to, to kind of move around with one finger versus mm -hmm. keeping three fingers on the screen, which can feel awkward and frankly right. a little tiring over time. When, and, when I started using the iPhone, we didn't have the Zoom controller. So I grew muscle memory to use the three fingers. So sometimes I'll go to use the controller and just instant, instinctively use my three fingers. And I'm like, I don't have to do that. So it's, mm -hmm. again, it's kind of one of those, um, what are your, what, what did you learn with? How did you learn to use your device? And sometimes those initial ways of learning just kind of stick. Mm -hmm. And Michael, I think one other setting that it's worth showing kind of in this Zoom area is I'm back on the main Zoom screen where I toggled it on. And down at the very bottom, there's a slider for your maximum zoom level. And mine is currently at 11.5 X, but I could increase it all the way to 15. So now if I do my um, triple or my double tap, it gets just a little bit bigger. So mm -hmm. you can um, set, you know, kind of how big it gets. And so what, another... some of the more complicated gestures, you can do a two, a three finger double tap and, and drag up and down to change your, your zoom level. And that, I know that's a little bit uh, difficult to do because of, you know, you have to do on the second down of your three fingers, then move your fingers up and down. So um, Android's yeah. magnification gestures um, is all done with one finger, which is a lot different from Apple's. So it's interesting stuff. Well, that's great. So Michael, what if I want to make my phone actually magnify something, you know, using my phone's camera? Can I do that? You sure can. You can use the magnifier app. And I, uh, I use magnifier all the time. So one of the things that I like to do is go bowling and I can't read the screens at the top of the, of the bowling alley. But with the magnifier app, I definitely can do that. So what I can do to open that app, um, we can turn that on in the control center. So we could go to control center and find uh, settings, control center, and find magnify. And make sure that that's added to your control center. OK. So I just went down and added it. Um, and it's it's a little bit confusing, magnifier versus magnification. and. I see, you know what, Michael, let's pause. We have a question from Amy. Okay. So Zoom, I just had a question. Um, so when you do the Zoom controller and you put it on your screen, is there any way to keep it from kind of going dim or translucent on the screen? Because I have some users that really like the Zoom um, shortcut, but then they can't ever find it on their screen because it kind of grays out to where it's yeah, kind of hard to see. Is there any way to make it where it doesn't do that? Do you know? I haven't tried to to change that. Um, Jessica, do we? Is there anything to change the color in that Zoom controller settings? Do you know? Let's let's go back and yeah. and look. Um, and there's a little bit of feedback. So, Michael, while I'm looking, would you um just restate the question? Sure. So the the question was. Can you change the color of the zoom controller as it, or or can you make the zoom controller not dim after a few seconds of inactivity? Okay, so it looks like when I go into zoom and then zoom controller, if I show controller at the very bottom, it says color white. So I could change it to there's white, blue, red, green, yellow, orange. Um, so you can change that. And then there's also a setting for idle opacity. So there we go. The default is set to 50%, but you could just have it set to 100% so it never dims. There we go. That's how we fix that. So well, thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, good question. Okay, let's see. Let me get back to where I was. So I did settings um, to turn on the magnifier app. Control center. Mm -hmm. And I, I added it to my included controls. Mm -hmm. 
So now if I, I'm just going to go back to my home screen. If I swipe down from the top right corner. Top right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then it is, oh, I have to pick it up. So it's um, down at the bottom. It's like a little, um, it's like a little magnifier with a plus sign. Right. So, and I have a postcard here that's about way around. So this is currently set to, um, it's all the way down to the, I probably just, you know, no zoom, but I can really zoom in. Yes. So if I wanted to read this, it, it turns your phone into a magnifying glass. Um, and, and the magnifier app also has color filters too. So you can make it into basically a handheld uh, CCTV, just like the Ruby, just like the, the uh, all of the others um, that I'm not remembering the names of. Uh, the Ruby was one of the most popular ones that I've worked with over the years, but it does this does the same thing on your iPhone. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, um, yeah, it looks like there's a flashlight. If I needed mm -hmm. to make things a little bit brighter, I could do that. Um, there's a number of settings to work with. So it's, and I think this, another place that this is really useful and I need to put my hand down um, because I, it, I am getting a little bit tired, which I guess is one of the um, risks of using this, but it is, um, sorry, using it for a menu. If you're ever out, especially somewhere where there's dim, dim light, you can turn on the flashlight, you can zoom way in and that will, you know, it can really make a difference. Exactly. Now, Michael, how do I get out of it? Just swipe up from the bottom to go to your home screen. There you go. Easy as that. And, so, then, and once you use the magnifier app for the first time, it actually puts an icon on your home screen somewhere. Oh, okay. Um, so I would have to flip through all of my different apps to be right. Able to you, that. But it's just easier because you can get to magnifier from control center anywhere. So you could be in another app and just jump right into the magnifier. So. Well, that's great. So magnification is to make things on your phone screen bigger. And then magnifier is an app that you have to enable in the control center. And that lets you look at other things using your phone camera. And on Android, each Android phone has a little bit of a different way of doing magnification. Some you have to download an app from Google Play. Some have it built in. It's a little, this one's a little different depending on what device you have. Yes. All right, so why don't we pause again and see if there are any questions or tips on either of those. And for those of you who have joined recently, welcome. Um, this is recorded, so if you missed a little bit of the beginning, you'll get a replay. Um, and we are going through 10 different um, settings and features on your smartphone that you can optimize if you have low vision. And we are not currently presenting with um, voiceover. Um, some of the next features are actually going to talk to us. So you wouldn't want to use both of them. Um, usually we always mm -hmm. present with voiceover, but this is one time that we are not doing that. So we're trying to yep. give really good descriptions of you know, how we're getting to places. All right. Well, Michael, I'm not seeing any questions. So if, okay. you, if you think of something, raise your hand or unmute, let us know. Um, but why don't we go into some of the talking features that if you don't want to use voiceover, if you don't want everything to talk, but you still want to hear some things, how can you do that? Sure. So the next feature we want to talk about is speak screen. Mm -hmm. And what this does, it's, it's a nice feature because uh, sometimes you just want everything on the screen uh, read to you, or maybe you're reading a book and you want the book read to you with a, with a voice that you've selected. You can do that with uh, this feature with Speak Screen. The way we enable this is, again, just like everything else that we've talked about for the most part, you go to the Settings app. We then go to Accessibility and Spoken Content. We can then enable Speak Screen. Okay, and so that's actually the second toggle down. The top one is speak selection, but we're gonna go mm -hmm. ahead and toggle on speak screen. Yep. 
And should, do you want me to go ahead and try it on this screen, Michael, or go to sure. a web page? We could either do um, this screen or the wayaround.com webpage to read the website. All right, let's see. Okay. So, and the way you turn it on is it's two fingers and you flick down from the very top. And this was another one that is a little bit tricky um, to, you know, to get it to read instead of doing something else, um, you know, when you're kind of swiping from the top of the screen. So let's see if it'll work today. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so it, um, Expand website navigation menu. Accessible labels for the blind, deaf blind, and anyone with vision loss. Your biggest problem isn't poor eyesight. It's that so much of the information in the world is visual. But you shouldn't have to wait around for someone else to get the information you need. Or, All right. So I'm going to, I I paused it. Mm -hmm. So one of the differences is there's this black, um, you know, it, it's an arrow and then you can either skip forward if I press the forward button, it'll kind of go paragraph by paragraph. You can also, um, it's currently set to a 1x. So for some people, that's too fast and you could slow it down. For other people, that is painfully slow and you could speed it up, um, whatever your preferences are. Exactly. So that is, um, and it, it likes to go over to the side. So it'll get out of your way, but then you can, um, you can just tap it and it'll come back. And, and, and Michael, I should also share the what I found is, I don't know if it's just because of how my hand is shaped, but I the for the two finger flick from the top, I'm using my middle finger and my ring finger. And that tends to work a lot better when I try to use my index, index finger and middle finger. That's when it tends to, you know, pull something else down from the top. So I am much more successful with my middle finger and my ring finger makes sense so. the so the the speak screen is very useful because uh you know maybe you don't use voiceover but you just need that little extra spoken content and uh it's very useful there mm -hmm. and i think one other benefit is you know if you if you're someone who you don't use a screen reader it's, you know, it's kind of overwhelming, which, you know, learning all of the gestures to navigate with a screen reader can be a lot. It can really take some time. Mm -hmm. But the thing I like about this speak screen is that you can, some of the things that it says, you know, it'll tell you image or heading. And, you know, some of those things just to let you know what's actually on the screen or the same things you'll hear in the screen reader. And then just like, um, you know, a screen reader, you might swipe to get to the next piece of information. You can do the same thing with that, um, you know, forward or back button. And so it's a good way to kind of learn, you know, what you would be hearing without having to navigate by gestures. And I will say, I've, you know, a lot of the um, folks who work on Way Around, including our two co-founders have vision loss. And there were several people who said, I don't need a screen reader, but I'm going to learn it, you know, for work because I want to, you know, really learn how it works. And as they got more comfortable with it, they start using it more and more. And I said earlier, I have pretty good eyesight. I wear glasses, but I would consider myself sighted. And I even use my screen reader sometimes, you know, there, there is many times where you know, I'm in the middle of doing something at my computer, but then I realize, oh, it's time to start cooking dinner, <laughs> you know, and I want to, and I actually want to keep reading that blog or keep reading my emails, but I can't be sitting at my computer doing that. And I'll use a screen reader, or I could use something like this speak screen. And I think there's some other ways too that Michael may talk about later, but just having that audio, um, you know, lets us multitask in a different way. So even mm -hmm. if you're not someone who thinks you need a screen reader all the time, um, it's definitely worth playing around with it and trying to learn it because it's it's handy. It's really handy. All right. Um, with that, Michael, do you, um, I, oh, let's see, Leanne has something. Go ahead, Leanne. Hi, thank you. Um, so I was just playing with this a little bit and I'm, I'm a vision rehab therapist and I'm always getting customers wanting to know how to read their, or I'm sorry, not how they can read, but how to get the phone to read their text messages to them. 
-hmm. when I was just now playing with this, what I gathered is it will read the name of who sent the message in the little bit that I visually see on the screen. But if I go into the message, it doesn't read the everything that's there. Is that true or am I missing? So if you go into the actual text message conversation, it will read, but you'd have to do the speak screen again. What might be more beneficial there is speak selection, where you okay. can just select the text you want to speak, and then there will be a speak button uh, in a little pop-up menu that will be there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's a great question, Leanne. All right. Michael, let's, um, why don't we go back and talk about speak typing feedback? Cause that's sure. another one that can be pretty helpful. Yes, it can. And this is in the same place in the settings, accessibility, spoken content. What's really nice about this. And I, I will also will say use with caution. Um, because what's, what's nice about this, it will read as you type on your keyboard. So it will read out the characters or words. You can pick both options. And it will read as you're typing. So you get that feedback of if you're typing the right letter or not, or if it auto-corrected your word to be the wrong word, <laughs> which mm -hmm. can happen. Um, but the thing to be careful and, and to make sure about is don't I, I would not write uh, sensitive content with this feature. Uh, and, and that's because if you don't have headphones on it, it will be broadcast to the world what you're typing. So uh, same with voiceover, but, uh, you know, it, it's common sense. You know, it's like, oh, I can have everything speak. Well, should you have that out playing to the world or should you have headphones or have your phone's volume quieter so that what you type is indeed uh, confidential? Mm hmm. And I think a lot of people who find that they benefit from having things spoken aloud, you know, if you have um, like a Bluetooth hearing aid or Bluetooth headphones, you know, then then you can still get that spoken benefit, mm -hmm. but have the privacy, you know, whereas um, what I'm doing, it's just coming through my phone speakers and, right. and, and everyone's going to hear it, um, which some people and in some situations, that's totally fine. So Michael, I'm still in spoken content and do I go down to typing feedback? Correct, yes. Okay. And then there's all different options. What do you recommend I turn on? So what we wanna turn on specifically is, I, I use, if I'm gonna use this, I do characters and words. Okay. I don't know that I necessarily, if you have a hard time understanding the characters, the character hints is useful. So it would probably read the phonetics of that character. So that that would be if you have trouble hearing like P versus B. Right. Okay. Okay. So, well, shall we try it out? Sure. Let's. So you could go to your home screen. And if you want to take one finger and swipe down on your home screen, you should get the spotlight search. Oh, you know what? I didn't do that. Do you... You know what? Let's go into the way around app. Okay, that's perfect. We'll create something. Let's see, Michael. What should we tag today? Uh, we want to create a shirt, a, a blue button Let's, down shirt. Okay, blue button down shirt. Oh, I might not have my volume up. Are you hearing it? Because I'm not hearing I am it. I'm not. That's interesting. Okay. Let's see. Maybe I didn't do something correctly. Is the checkbox at the top enabled for the feature? Typing feedback. Hmm. Hmm. One of those things you try it one day and you try it again and it doesn't work. Yeah, that's right. Interesting. Okay. So speak words. So when you press space, it will speak, should speak the word. But it's not. You're not hearing it. Well, there you go. And I, you know what I'm noticing is the. Um, you know what? I, I wonder if that, that speak screen um, arrow is still there. That's what I was just thinking. 
zoom. Oh, that's not what I want. Spoken content. Speak screen. Is that? Let's see if that fixes it. If we go okay. back to white. And you know what? While I'm here, maybe I should also turn off the um, zoom controller. Yes. Yeah. You can get a lot of over, we, I, we, I call them overlays. Here, I'm just going to close out and see if this will work. Cat B. There we go. There we go. Okay. L. Go ahead and type, yep. U. E. And now I'm hitting space. Blue. So once I hit space, it says the whole word. That way you would know if there's a typo or something. Right. S T R I P E D striped P O L O polo S H I R T shirt. So there we go. It's, um, I think sometimes those the letters can be a little bit tricky and you might not know if um, you know if you've hit the wrong one. So this can definitely be helpful. Again, privacy is um, is a concern. So you could turn it off and on whenever it's convenient. Mm -hmm. All right. And I am not going to go ahead and write this to a tag because I don't need to do that. Okay, so well, Michael, let's pause again. Um, so we just talked about the speak screen, which was um, the swiping swiping down from the top, and then the speak typing feedback. Yep. And we learned that um, somewhere along the way we had too many combinations of settings, and so <laughs> I closed out of some, restarted the way around app, and it it was working again. No, so I don't think a you have example. to. I don't think you have to turn off speak screen, but I think that little dialogue being there was what was keeping it from working so okay. you, you can have both of those on but you just have to tap that little arrow for speak screen tap the x and i think that would have made it start working again got it okay so good any thoughts questions could you see yourself using this or any people you work with okay well, we have um, two other features and we're right on track. We have about um, 10, 12 minutes left. So the last two um, are actually not related at all. Michael, do you wanna talk about third-party keyboards? Yes. So this is a feature that was very popular in, for, in the blindness uh, specific space for a long time. For even for blind users, uh, as there were keyboards out there that could do things that made it easier to type. And those are a little defunct now, but for even for low uh, vision users, these features are still around. And uh, there are keyboards you can get to change the color and contrast of the keyboard, like the Gboard app from Google. Um, I was able to set different colors, different sizes, all kinds of things. So they have large print keyboards. They have uh, all kinds of keyboards. They even have where you could just talk to your phone through your keyboard. And uh, so, and Michael, um, let me just interject. When you say a keyboard, we're not talking about like a physical keyboard correct. that connects via Bluetooth or that's mm -hmm. plug in. This is the keyboard on on your phone screen, but you can correct. kind of get a different one that might give you different features. It replaces your virtual keyboard on your phone's screen. So yeah. instead of seeing Apple's keyboard, um, you would see Google's keyboard, the Gboard, or others like that. So it just depends on what your preference is and uh, you know what what looks best to you. I I don't use these, but I know others who have, and and sometimes it can really help. Uh, you know, one area where I might actually look into this is the iPad, and I have a iPad Pro twelve point nine inch, but the key the the key letters are so small I can barely read them. So it would be nice to have a keyboard where I could change the sizing of the letters, and that does exist. So. Uh, 
it's worth looking into if that's something you would like to change for your uh, ability to type on your key on your phone or iPad. Mm -hmm. And and so um, to get one of these, you know, the, it's a third party app. So you would either need to go to the Google Play Store or the mm -hmm. Apple App Store. Correct. And what I would recommend is just search for, you know, keyboard with larger letters or mm -hmm. Um, there's also some that are less sen sensitive, you know, so if you are someone who, you know, maybe has fat fingers or something, and you tend to type two keys at once, there's some, you know, for people with, you know, mobility or dexterity challenges. Um, so, but just um, do a search is probably the best way, read reviews to find out what the different keyboards are good at. And I'm going to just go into the way around app again, I'm back on my blue stripe polo. And um, down at the bottom, there's that little globe. Michael and I were playing around with, um, it was the G board, the Google keyboard. So when I just press and hold that, I can see I can either have my English keyboard, my emoji keyboard, or my G board. So I could um, change it out. So now you can see it's a slightly different keyboard. There's a little Google icon, it's suggesting words to me. So that's how you would um, select which keyboard you're wanting to use. So you could mm -hmm. actually have multiple there. Yes, you um, can. I'll, I'll change it back to the native Apple keyboard. So it just looks slightly different. Um, so if there's, you know, I'm, I'm someone that I actually tend to use an Android more often in my day to day life. Um, you can throw tomatoes at me later. Um, <laughs> but, you know, for so what um, even when we were playing around with this, just the slight change from the Apple keyboard to the Google, it just felt more familiar to me. Really? So, Interesting. Um, so it is, um, it, it's something that you might want to consider, especially, you know, if you're, if you find that you have a lot of typos, changing the keyboard, it may be a keyboard sensitivity thing more than a vision thing. Um, all right, and so the very last one, Michael, is solid wallpapers. And I I was like, Michael, what is this and why is it good? So why don't you tell the audience? Sure, so sometimes you may, you know, our, our phone screens have so much contrast. You make your phone into yours by changing your wallpaper. Well, that's great for people that can, you know, see that contrast, but what if you can't? What if you just want a solid color for your wallpaper? Well, that can be done. And we can do that by going to, and, and, and you can, it really helps with seeing the contrast of the icons and the text. So for example, you could have a black background and your, your icons and text are light. So let, let's demo this. Let's go to the settings app. Mm -hmm. Then we'll okay, go to wallpaper. Okay. So, mm -hmm. So you have to scroll down. For me, wallpaper is right under accessibility. Isn't that convenient? <laughs> and so it's showing me my current one. And then there's a button that says add new add wallpaper. wallpaper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you're going to scroll down to color. Okay, which is all the way at the very bottom. Yep. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to choose this purpley one. And then you'll flick right to you get to solid. Okay. Yep. So you, if you have some vision at the top, you can see the um, the clock is really kind of strange um, numbers with a bunch of lines. So I can, you know, make some mm -hmm. changes just to see. This one is called vapor. Um, this is bright, and all the way over at the right. So I'm just flicking, um, like flicking left and right to get here. So it says solid. And, and so if this purple isn't exactly the shade that I like, um, kind of in the bottom left, there's a little circle. And if mm -hmm. I click that, it gives me lots of different selections of colors. And then there's also a kind of a tone bar. So Michael, you were saying that um, a lot of people, you know, just solid black is really good um, for accessibility. Mm -hmm. Yes. So right now I, I changed it to black. It's kind of in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like. I can make it a lighter black or a really solid black. So this looks pretty black to me. Yep. Okay, so that's so perfect. I'm, and then at the very top right, it says add. The top left is cancel if I decide, mm -hmm. no, I don't want to do this. 
Um, and so I can either set it as a pair or I can customize the home screen. So we'll just right. do it as a pair. Right. And so now it says my current wallpaper is all black. So let's go to the home screen and you can see there that there's a lot more contrast to what we're looking at on our home screen. You don't have to worry about the wallpaper and the icons and things being a very overwhelming. You can easily see what you have there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So Michael, I did promise people that we would talk about one thing and I think you and I forgot to talk about it when we were prepping for this, but I know you've got it. What is the difference between Siri or a Google Assistant um, versus a screen reader versus something like Speak Screen? Great question. You know, whenever I used to train students that were losing their sight, that was always the question. Well, I've got Siri. I've got Google Assistant. Why do I need voiceover or talkback? And the reason is that Siri and uh Google Assistant are assistants. They talk back to you, but they can they only perform actions. They don't read the screen. A screen reader is called a screen reader because it reads the contents and items that are on the screen. Siri and VoiceOver, uh, I mean Siri and Google Assistant do not do that. Uh, so, and then VoiceOver and Talkback compared to Speak Screen, you know. VoiceOver completely takes over the gestures on your phone or your tablet or whatever you have, or TalkBack does as well. So those programs actually work, uh, it, they change over the gestures. So it makes your device work differently compared to speak screen, which leaves everything alone, but allows you to have spoken content on your screen. So each it's kind of like like a step system you have um spoken content and and siri that work without that can work without uh, voiceover talk back and then you have that step up to talk back or voiceover that allows you to do everything non-visually great yeah that's a really good explanation so we have a few minutes left are there any questions or topics that you were hoping we would cover that we haven't covered yet I have one. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. go ahead, Deborah. Um, I thought I saw um, where you were going to talk about voice dream reader. Or did I misread? Or am I thinking about something else? I'm sorry if I... I yeah, I, that wasn't on our list. Um, Michael, do you want to talk about that at all? So, you know, we were talking about reading books and things like that. That can be used for that. Uh, we... We have, and I know a lot of people that use it um, on Mac and on the phone, but it's a great app where you could load your books into that app um, that you may have gotten from Bookshare or other places and be able to read those books uh, with Voice Dream Reader. I think it even has a scan component where you could scan your documents in as well. Did you have a specific question about that? Uh, no, I was just wondering how to get it, how to uh, get it to work, how to do that. For um, if I wanted to use Voice Dream Reader instead of um, like the Voiceover, right? It it's it, it is a download from the App Store. You'd have to, I think it's a subscription now. Um, I have so you, it. I have okay. downloaded it. I just don't know exactly how to make it read everything. Right. It's it's pretty complicated it, it's you have to load the books to it from bookshare and then i think there's probably i haven't used the app in okay. many, many years but there's probably okay. a play button okay so maybe i can talk to bookshare or something and find out a little right. bit more information how to make it work with that mm -hmm. all right thank you sure thing good any other questions and I see there's a few people who have just joined. I think there was an, an issue um, with Zoom, the way Zoom set up the time on this. So I apologize if you thought it was starting now. We unfortunately are just about to end, but um, I, I'm happy to stay on for a few minutes and we are recording this. So um, if you miss some or a lot of this, it'll be available for you to catch up on it later. And you can always send us an email with questions, but... 
Um, let us know now if you have any questions while we're here on the line. This is Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia. Just a thought for the lady. I hope she's still on. What she might do is ask her phone, whether it's Google or Siri, say, how do I use the voice stream reader? You know, or YouTube or whatever, and it'll pull up some different things that she could look at. That's a good idea. Thank you. You're welcome. They're not always real helpful, but sometimes they are. Yeah, that's a good tip. Thank you. I have a question. Sure. Can you just uh, give us again the email to contact you if we have questions? Yes. So our email is connect at wayaround.com, C-O-N-N-E-C-T at W-A-Y-A-R-O-U-N-D, and that's dot com. Um, and that will go directly to both me and Michael. So that is a great way to get to us. Yep. Great. Thank you. Good. And I'll also say that, you know, any of our trainings or webinars, if you find that, you know, this was really helpful and you would love for us to do this for, you know, a, a user group or, you know, professional group that you're a part of, um, we often do the, that type of thing, whether it's a training specifically about Way Around or any of our other webinars, we're happy to do that. So if that is ever of interest, just send us an email. Again, connect at wayaround.com and we'd love to set that up with you. Now, are there any features that anyone on the call is using that um, you you just love and you think this has really made your phone more easy to use? One feature I use that maybe you might know something about is the uh, transparency setting. Mm -hmm. Is that with um, like headphones or, or are you uh, talking about like the, the, the text uh, or the, the text, the text one, it seems like it makes the things on my screen clearer. The reduced mm. transparency. Is that what? Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. Yeah. That is, that is a very nice feature. Um, it, if there's transparent uh, backgrounds and things like that, it reduces that. So it makes it less overwhelming to kind of see stuff behind what you're looking at so it makes it easier to focus on so yeah thank so you so michael for example that. like down at the bottom of the screen um it's highlighting four icons so if i turn on reduce transparency that kind of grayscale would go away a bit right it would be more uh opaque and less um you know uh, transparent behind those icons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's a great suggestion mm -hmm. And and that's the thing. There's so many features, you know, there's, there's even, you know, we mentioned speak selection, but we didn't really demo that, but that's a feature. There's uh reduce white point, reduce transparency, so many others that we could be here all day, you know, going through all of these, but these are, you know, 10 that uh, we felt would be really nice to show folks uh, mm -hmm. out there. Good. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, if you have other questions, we will stay on the line just for another minute or two, but I think we'll go ahead and wrap up the, the formal part of the presentation. It looks like um, somebody is... Um, all right. Thank you. Somebody just sent me a, a note. Um, that sounds great. And um, if, if anyone has any questions or wants to keep chatting, We'll stay here for a few more minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Hey, so I recently was on Facebook um, and